Okay, let's look at the principles of the United States Constitution. When the Constitution was written, the Founding Fathers included certain principles or main ideas of government that reflect some of the fundamental values of our democratic system. These are the baseline, the cornerstones, the foundation of our democratic system. And you're going to recognize most of these, but they're just in a different wording, and you need to know both. You need to be able to recognize these principles and also understand the wording that I use because you're going to see this all again. So the five principles of the United States Constitution starts with principle number one, which is popular sovereignty. Popular means the people. Sovereignty means power. Based on the preamble of the Constitution, it is clear that the power and authority of the government comes from the American people. Take a look at the first line. It says, we the people of the United States. That's who is writing this Constitution. That's who's agreeing to give the government its power. That's who holds the power in this nation. It is the people. Principle number two is limiting the power of government. The Founding Fathers did not want the national government to have too much power. They were afraid of a powerful central government like the King of England. And so the Constitution included the concept of limited government. Under this idea, the national government does not have absolute authority. Who does? Remember, principle one, the people do. Also, uh, the national government may only do those things that the people have given it the power to do. The national government must obey its own laws. No one is above the law. It doesn't matter if you're the president of the United States, if you're a senator, if you're a congressman, you must obey the law. And the national government must follow the Constitution. And the Constitution is the list of all the things that the government can do, all the powers the government has and the powers that the government does not have. So the power of the government in this country is limited. Number three, sharing of power. Under the Constitution, states had to give up some of their power to the national government, and but also the national government does not have certain powers. Only the states do. This division of power is known as federalism. And our nation today is um, run by a system of government that is a federalist system. Federalism is a system of government in which power is divided between the national and state governments. Um, so we'll probably see, yeah, here's a document that you should look at. And if you need to, pause it here and look at what powers the national government has, which power the state governments have, and which powers both governments share. Um, so the national government has delegated powers. And remember, a delegate is somebody who is chosen and sent as a representative. So these are powers that are chosen and given to the national government. Then state government powers are called reserve powers. And think of that as they're kept, they're held in trust by the state governments. They're not given away. And then concurrent powers means shared powers. Um, so we're going to get into these powers, and like I said, you, you should pause this here and read through these different powers to understand, and you'll see in our life, these powers in action. Um, principle four is separation of powers. The Founding Fathers further limited the power of government by dividing it into three branches, the legislative, executive, and judicial. This is known as a separation of powers. And the definition of separation of powers is right there. The duties and responsibilities of government are divided into three separate but co-equal branches. And those branches, the legislative branch makes the laws and is made up of Congress. The executive branch enforces the laws and the leader of that branch is the president. And then the judicial branch interprets the laws and is led by the courts and the Supreme Court is at the top. Finally, our government is designed to protect against tyranny. Principle five is protecting against tyranny. The founding fathers created a government in which each branch has some way to check or control the other two branches. This limits the power of government and prevents the abuse of power. It is known as checks and balances. 
There you go. The definition of checks and balances is the ability of each branch of government to check, control, or limit the power of the other branches. So um, if the Congress starts making laws that are tyrannical, that are uh, wrong, just evil, well, the president in the executive branch has the power to veto that law, to cancel it. And let's say the government or the the um, Congress and the president both they pass a bad law that is tyrannical. The Supreme Court has the power to cancel that law. Um, so the judicial branch um, has the power of judicial review. They can declare a law or act of government unconstitutional. And there's your definition, which is basically what I just read for judicial review. <clears throat> and unconstitutional means in violation of the U.S. Constitution. So we're going to spend quite a bit of time on this idea of, um, of checks and balances, where one branch has power to stop the other two from doing bad things. And um, two branches have to, well, basically all three branches have to work together to get anything done. Here's a good picture. We're going to see this again of checks and balances in action. 